I've come to this state-of-the-art testing facility in Germany to investigate if the air on board a plane really is a fetid soup of other people's germ-laden breath. It takes some serious technology to work out how the flow of air in an aircraft cabin can affect the movement of germs. For a start, you need a massive low-pressure chamber which can simulate conditions at 30,000 feet. And inside, a real aircraft cabin encased in a temperature control system. To make it as accurate as possible, all of these dummies are heated, which feels rather strange, but it helps to recreate natural body heat and the small thermals of air which are created by passengers on a plane. And just to show you, take a look at this thermal imaging camera as I walk along. Now, that face belongs to Victor, and Victor is going to be demonstrating what happens when you cough as soon as we've taken off. We're good to go. Hello. Yeah, we are set to go. Shall I do the honours? Yeah. A little smoke helps to highlight the gentle air movement. We usually try also to um, develop in the, in the aircraft cabinets that we have a cross-sectional uh, movement of the airflow. So when you look at uh, this sketch, for example, um, then we supply the air in the very top and it hits the overhead bin here, circulates down there and is extracted here. We can see this circular movement in the test cabin. The steady currents drag air down from above and across the cabin to exit vents near the floor. Almost none travels along the length of the cabin. Now what happens when someone coughs into these currents? Hi, Victor. Can you do your cough experiment? <coughs> it's quite homespun, but very effective. And it's interesting because, you, well, you can see him doing it now, <coughs> but what you start to see is that actually when you cough, the particles are not going that far. The downward movement of air carries most coughs and sneezes down towards the floor where they get extracted from the cabin. So if you're travelling by plane, right, and you hear someone coughing six rows ahead, you're not worried? No, I'm not worried by those things. <laughs> But if the air is sucked, germs and all, through the floor, where does it go then? Back into another section of the cabin? Well, no. Actually, around half of the cabin air is expelled through vents like this. The other half is then routed through HEPA filters. The same filters found in hospitals in operating theatres to keep the air clean and bug-free. That clean, filtered air is then mixed with the same quantity of fresh air from outside the plane. And that's what comes out of the vents above your seat. The air on a plane is refreshed roughly every two to three minutes. Now, if you compare that to an office, for example, it's every five to ten minutes. And if you're in a cinema, you could be sitting in the same germ-laden air for anything up to 20 minutes. So airborne germs are not the real worry on a plane. Touching infected people and contaminated surfaces is a far greater risk than breathing the same air. And, of course, germs spread like this wherever you are, whether you're on a plane or a train or at school, in the office or going around the shops. 